Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and yes, I am out on vacation right now, that's why this video is a little late, and that's why we're in a very unusual setup, but we have got to go through this week in EDM, from this past week in EDM, we've got I think 31 songs I wanted to talk about, 32 that range from trash to stand out, as always there is a Spotify link down below for all the songs in a playlist if you want to listen to through that, uh, but let's hop into it with the trash category, songs I think are not that great, I actually just got one, and it's good times Head and 4B with Magnificent. Um, big Room Tech House that is incredibly generic and boring, and the melody is a bore. The production isn't anything special. Even the album art feels like they put little art, little effort into it. I, I, it feels like it's AI art to me. I don't know if I can't confirm that, but it looks bad. It doesn't look great, so... Uh, let's move into the bad category songs that I thought were pretty bad. We've got Cashmere and Seven Skies with Out of Control. Uh, the vocal sample used here uh, really doesn't match the rest of the production in both its tone and delivery. Uh, the beat is also like generic main stage track that has no substance outside of a festival. Wasn't really vibing with this one. Then we've got Snails, Hi, I'm Ghost, Whales, and Quiet with Bodies. Uh, yeah, a dubstep cover of the Drowning Pool's um, Bodies, the Let the Bodies Hit the Floor, uh, with some somehow harsher metal elements than the original. I wasn't really feeling the vocals on this version, and the drops were pretty un uninteresting. Um, just an unnecessary track that doesn't really tonally scratch a new itch that the original didn't already. So that's what I think about that. And then we got Tiesto and Afrojack featuring M MC Ambush with Light It Up, a main stage big room track with a melody that just doesn't give off any real energy at all. Um, MC Ambush does practically nothing here, and the production is incredibly linear. Wasn't really feeling that. So we're moving into the meh category songs that I thought were pretty meh. Uh, we've got Dylan Francis, Galantis, and Arden Jones with Pretty Low, the Galantis, and Bully VIP. Bit of an odd remix here that turns the drops into this kind of light drum and bass area sections with just kind of an, an odd melody and like a strangely appearing and disappearing vocals all throughout too. It just, it just felt weird. The song felt uncomfortable, I would say more so than anything. Then we got Vicstar, Retrovision, and Dyson with Have It All, a very serviceable Future House tune with a heavy emphasis on that kind of bass elements. Um, sounds very much like a solo Retrovision track, honestly. Um, maybe if this was half a decade ago, I would really appreciate the sound, uh, but nowadays I'm just not that into it. You know Summer Was Fun with Going Crazy from the new Cruise Cuts EP, the return of Summer Was Fun. Uh, this track in particular, kind of just a fine commercial house tune. Um, for a comeback, it's nothing really overly new or refreshing to hear. Kind of surprised that Summer Was Fun took a new direction here, tonally going for a more house approach rather than this kind of indie dance future bass sound. But um, yeah, wasn't really feeling this one a whole ton. I thought it was just meh. Uh, then we've got Cloud Nun featuring Avila with Bottle It Up from the new Bliss EP from Cloud Nun on uh, Lost in Dreams, I believe. Um, Cloud Nun going for a more melodic bass approach to this track uh, in particular, and I didn't really find it to really work all that well for him. Uh, Vila's vocals feel a little flat, and there's this kind of weird tonal dissonance between the drop and the off-drop sections. I just didn't really feel like it all gelled that well together, and I just didn't really love uh, Cloud Nun taking a more um, melodic bass approach to his production, uh, at least on this one. Then we've got Riot and Sippy with Pump Up the Bass Line, a fine dubstep track that is very much Riot and Sippy with the kind of densely metallic synth sounds. Um, I don't really mind the leads on the drops, but um, kind of didn't really do anything else with those kind of quarter note hits all throughout. It kind of just is the classic Riot sound of today that is kind of just, dun, dun, like there's just nothing going on. I just want some more, please. We've got Nurko featuring Jordan Shaw with Evergreen from the new United EP from Nurko. Uh, yeah, this is another kind of fine melodic dubstep track. Um, the lyrics are pretty generic and the mixing is a touch flat. But hey, if you like melodic dubstep, you're going to enjoy this. For me, again, I still think it's all pretty bland and derivative at this point and not really feeling it. We've got DJ Snake and Friday with Complicated, a simple kind of reggaeton beat with Latin instrumentation and a heavy emphasis on Friday's vocals all throughout here. Um, it's a nicely like kind of moving track that isn't overly complex that I think is fine for DJ Snake for the most part, but not that kind of big commercial hit, which I did sort of expect from a Friday collaboration. But yeah, that's that. Then we've got Murata with Retribution, and he is providing some retribution here. Uh, this is Murata's best song in years, maybe. Uh, the mixing is still a touch linear, I would say, but the melody is way more impactful with production. It doesn't sound like everything else he's done up to this point. Um, all that being said, uh, we're still now back to just generic Britom for me personally. doesn't sound terrible, but still is generic. So... 
Then we got Bro Safari with Scumbag, the Kill Safari remix. Um, if you remember that Bro Safari had a scumbag scumbag tra track back from years and years ago, but now Kill Safari is this new combined alias between Kill the Noise and Bro Safari that are now remixing this old track, but um, yeah, for a remix with a new combined alias on a track that's now over a half a decade old, um, it's kind of just like good, like fine, like it's it's just kind of here. The remix is a good balance of both artists' sound and style, um, but it's a kind of a tad dry and suffers from a lack of diversity in its tone and feels a, a touch dated for um, 2024, I would say. So uh, kind, of an, kind of an oddball one there as well. Then we got Camarion with One More Time, liquid drum and bass with a roomy atmosphere and a constant drum kit. Um, it's neat, it's clean, and it's just maybe not doing enough with that main lead melody uh, for it to be anything other than meh for me, but I uh, still didn't mind it. Then we're moving into the good category songs that I thought were pretty good. Uh, we've actually got Dada Life with Five Notes from Paradise, a uh, new future rave kind of big room techno that is very set in this futuristic atmosphere. I actually think this is some of Dada Life's best in a while. It's not overly complex, but I think they did a great job with the tone, and um, they did so using a ton of reverb here, very spacey, not in terms of like outer space, but just like big room uh, atmosphere here. So I liked it. thought it was pretty good. They got Kai Wachi and Prosecute with Uncaged, a forceful dubstep track with heavy distortion and crashing bass lines. Um, the mixing is, again, yeah, a touch flat here, as Kai Wachi tends to have on some of those tracks. Um, and the second drop was a little bit more boring than the first, but overall, I thought the track had more going for it with its kind of intense vocals and fierce first drop movement. So, uh, not too bad. Way to go. Then we got Shingo Nakamura and or Missing Ink and Oliver River with Lily Garden. Probably one of my favorite tracks from Shingo in a little while. Um, it's a Shingo track to its core with its atmosphere and tone. It just feels like you were at peace listening to it, like you're you're walking through like a rain soaked uh, Tokyo or something like that, and it just uh, is very blissful. So way to go, Shingo. Then we've got Bag, Raider, Bag Raiders and Panama with Flowers, a chilled out garage style track on this one um, with these kind of ethereal out of body vocals and a very nice atmosphere. I'm very surprised with how well I think Bag Raiders did on this one. So, And it's kind of a different sound for what they're, I remember them from Shooting Stars at least. So. Then we've got Starseed and Lexi Scatina with You, a strong mellow dub first and third drops with a robust side trance midsection um, that all feels very comfortable for both Starseed and Lexi here. Um, if you're going to listen to mellow dub, this might just be some of the most consistent mellow dub out there right now from Starseed. Then we've got La Youth, Myrn, and Birdie Scott with Golden. Uh, Five-minute progressive house tune with an uplifting tone and feel to it all. The vocals were really crucial to this track, and I thought the production was like good, uh, but nothing individually special in the grand scheme of progressive house, and I really do think it's those vocals from Birdie that um, take this track from uh, meh to good, so... Then we got Jason Ross and Fairlane with Wake Up, another kind of nice, well-executed melodic bass track that is very much up Jason Ross and Fairlane's alley. This sounds like something you would hear from a Jason Ross and Fairlane collaboration here. It's not the most extravagant track, but another great melodic track um, if that's your kind of jam. Then we have got Sleepy Tom featuring Thandy, featuring Thandy Phoenix and Magna St. Hillary with The Rush from the title track, or that is the title track from the new EP of the same name, The Rush um, from Sleepy Tom. Uh, yeah, this is a brand new set of funk and new disco tracks that are pure bliss. Um, this track in particular is probably more funk than it is kind of uh, new disco, I would say. Uh, but hey, it's just a sweet EP, and the track here is one that I needed to highlight. Um, both these vocalists killed it, and the production is probably some of the Sleepy Tom's smoothest I've heard in a little while. Then we've got Rossi with Show Off, uh, tackling that kind of modern trap sound that's so prevalent from ISOXO. Um, I, I can't knock it, even though it does feel very much like a derivative of the kind of ISOXO sound. Um, I do think it's great. Uh, it's playing off a kind of already popular formula that is already quite established now in 2024. The snares are sharp, the kicks snap, and the melody is very familiar yet uh, very brand new on this track. So way to go, Rossi. Then we've got Cyclops with Cry Baby. The micro drops are flying everywhere now, and this might just be one of the better ones. Uh, Cyclops' sound design was a perfect match for this unique micro drop sound, especially hearing it with like a purely kind of dubstep rhythm-esque um, tone to it or genre. Uh, the lead melody is memorable, and the late bass line is just kind of chugging the whole time. So uh, way to go, Cyclops. Then we've got Gyrofield with Lagrange, a fluid breakbeat track with airy vocals and a constant garage style kind of drum kit. Um, there are times where the track has a lot going on all at once, but um, Gyro really balances it nicely with a kind of uh, niche or more, uh, more abstract listening tune that I really enjoyed.
Then we've got Chill and Skybreak with Euphoria Rush. Absolutely wild collaboration and in the best way. Um, Speed House, then Color Base, then Side Trance, all for a track that kind of gives and gives and gives. Um, it's kind of all being also held together by this groovy baseline rift um, that sounds like it's kind of straight out of like a Mario Kart uh, tour soundtrack of sorts or a, a track from that. So another big collaboration this week. Then we've got What's So Not and Habstract featuring Maya Manser with Motions, also the title track from a new EP from What's So Not called Motions. Um, this is another strong breakbeat production with kind of clean vocals and engaging vocal chops. Um, this is probably my favorite track of the EP. The beat is smooth, the mixing is elite, and I'm really actually liking this new sound that What's So Not produced here with a more kind of laid back, smoother production. Then we've got Have and Laminar featuring PVC with movements, nasty drum and bass with a brooding bass line and crunching lead melody. Uh, PVC's hip-hop style vocals slot in really well with the intense kind of underground sound here, as uh, Have in particular has been on a run of really aggressive hitting DNB tunes, and it's working really well for me, and it's a style and tone I've really, really been gelling with. Then we've got Teddy, Teddy Killers with Wairu, I want to say, is the title of this one from the new Play Games EP. Uh, this is a strong dance floor DNB production of a track here with great kind of non-English drops. Um, the drops are dense and heavily distorted, and it sounds like some of Teddy Killers' best production uh, in a while, I would say. So uh, I need to get into the more, I need to get more into the whole EP holistically, for sure. Then we got Glacier with Enfold, a mixture of a lot of different sounds and styles here, some kind of light drum and bass, some indie dance, some soundtrack-like uh, instrumentation all throughout, and it all has this kind of um, yeah blissful sound design and uh, tone to it all. It's got some faster, more quickly moving sections, only to really slow it down a moment later. Uh, but more than anything, the mixing here, I think, is impeccable. Um, there's now three album arts of this thing, or these tr tracks that sound very similar. I think this is a new Glacier EP or album coming out. We have nothing confirmed yet, but I would be guessing it's an album because there's no news yet. I feel like if it was an EP, we would have it announced. So that's my prediction that this is an album. Uh, but we are now moving into the standout category songs I thought were a cut above the rest. We've got Feed Me with 100 Days Stay With Me uh, from the new Feed Me's Vintage Rally Championship EP, which is a mouthful of an EP name. But yeah, this is some more kind of atmospheric progressive house with long builds, great mixing, and a mix of bass house and techno elements, um, all for like a very, very unique Feed Me style track. Um, it's got these kind of long, drawn out progressive structures that I find um, quite rare for a Feed Me track, but um, damn, I need more of this from him. It is ridiculously good. Go listen to this if you like um, progression in any capacity. And finally, my number one song of the week is Bonobo with Expander. Another, we had tons of breakbeat this week. Um, brilliant atmospheric breakbeat track with a kind of reflective tone and dazzling instrumentation. Um, the percussion sounds here are quite pristine and really gives this whole thing a bit of a jungle vibe to it. A little bit of like a, ooh, like we're going through the jungle in some capacity. Um, the distorted synth melody is also a real treat too. So just an absolutely killer Bonobo track. Um, go listen to those if you have not. Uh, but yeah, that's been this week in EDM. Let me know what you think of any all songs in the comment section below. But other than that, I'm Dakota from Botan Media, and I'll see you guys in another video.